Today I would like to talk to you about the human microbiome, a diverse community of microorganisms that live in various parts of the human body. This community includes viruses, eukaryotes, archaea, and bacteria that live inside and outside our bodies and have various impacts on metabolism and other physiological processes. Depending on the condition of the human microbiome, negative or positive outcomes may occur. Our lifestyle choices and the foods we eat help determine the overall state of the microbiome. Smoking, drinking alcohol, consuming other drugs, and poor sleep can lead to dysbiosis. Even antibiotics can cause long-lasting damage to the microbiome by reducing microbial diversity and selecting for antibiotic-resistant strains of microorganisms. The gut microbiome, specifically in the digestive tract, is largely impacted by the food we eat. Enzymes from microbiota living in the colon help us digest dietary fiber. Short-chain fatty acids, or SCFAs, are a byproduct of this process, which actively lowers the pH of the colon, making it more acidic, and limiting the growth of certain harmful bacteria. One specific anaerobic bacterium that exists as part of the gut microbiota is Bifidobacterium longum. This bacterium has been associated with many health benefits, such as increased mental health, clearance of ammonia and histamine in the gut, and production of SCFAs. Among the many functions of B. longum, Perhaps the most important are its interactions with the immune system to inhibit inflammation and strengthening of the intestinal barrier, which can help prevent leaky gut syndrome. In conclusion, the human microbiome is a crucial aspect of our health and wellness. It is essential to understand the microbiome's role in our overall health and take measures to maintain its balance. Thank you. Microbes and me. What is human microbiota? The human microbiota consists of bacteria, fungi, archaea, and viruses. The total population of this crowded living community, whose numbers are expert in trillions and that live in human bodies, is more than 100 trillion. What are some benefits? Microbiota plays an important role in the fulfillment of many different body functions, such as digest digestion of food, support of the immune system, production of some vitamins, instantial health, prevention of inflammation, maintenance of ideal body weight, and brain activities. Microbiota and overall health. The role of micro microbiota in health and diseases is being highlighted by numerous studies since its discovery. Depending on the localized regions, microbiota can be classified into gut, oral, respiratory, respiratory and skin microbiota. Gut microbiota Gut microbiota are composed of several species of microorganisms, including bacteria, yeast, and viruses. Gut bacteria have several functions that are beneficial to humans. These include helping ingestible foods to be broken down and absorbed, promoting cell growth, suppressing the growth of harmful bacteria and preventing the passage of toxic products from the intense intestines into the blood. Streptococci. Streptococci are gram positive, non motile Catalyze negative cocci that occur in pails or chain. Older cultures may lose their gram positive character. Most sterp, sterp cocci are facultative anaerobes and some are obligate anaerobes. Most require enriched media. Role of streptococci is a type of probiotic. It's a good bacteria found in the diet. Digestive tract, it produces lactic acid in the gut.
human microbiota. Human microbiota is a collection of microorganisms that reside in and on the human body. These trillions of microorganisms include bacteria, fungi, virus, and other microbes. It plays a critical role in maintaining human health and body functions such as digestion, immunity, and metabolism, including the production of essential vitamin and nutrition. Uh, it can be impacted by a range of factors, including antibiotics, dietary changes, and lifestyle factors. Imbalance in microbiota links have been linked to a range of negative health impacts, including inflammation, infections, diseases, and metabolic disorder. Therefore, maintaining a healthy and diverse microbiota is, is essential for overall health and well-being. The oral microbiota has the second largest and diverse microbiota after the gut with over a thousand species of bacteria. In addition to being the initial point of digestion, this microorganism interacts with each other and the host to maintain oral health as well as systematic health. The primary are uh, Staphylococcus mutans, Staphylococcus, and Lactobacillus. The imbalance in oral microbiota can lead to negative health incomes such as dental caries and periodontal disease. In addition, it has linked to cardiovascular disease and other systematic conditions. Streptococcus sobrinus is a bacterial gram positive and member of Streptococcus genus. is closely related to Streptococcus mutants. Uh, it is an aerotolerant bacterium which can grow in the presence or absence of oxygen. It is a facultative anaerobe meaning that it can use both aerobic and anaerobic metabolism. It is known for the ability to produce lactic acid which contributes to the development of dental caries. Imbalance in oral micro can lead to the overgrowth of Streptococcus sobrinus uh, which contributes to the development of dental caries and other negative health outcomes. Treatment of this dilemma include the use of antimicrobial agents and the promotion of healthy oral microbiota to diet and lifestyle changes. Hello folks, my name is Cody and I will be presenting the microbe Lactobacillus acidophilus or acidophilus for short. Okay, so what is L. acidophilus? Well, it is one of the many good bacteria living in your body. And not only does it help break down food or absorb nutrients, but it also uh, fights off bad organisms that might cause diseases. In fact, it, it, it plays an important role as the host's uh, defense mechanism against your pathogens. And... Uh, L. acidophilus are uh, gram-positive rods, and they are one of the most helpful microorganisms, not only in food, but also in the uh, urinary and digestive systems, as they are known to prevent diarrhea and uh, urinary infections. There are even supplements of this stuff, and they can come in granules, powders, capsules, and even liquid uh, preparations. However, though, L. acidophilus is still uh, an organism that is considered a bacterium, even though that body, that our bodies, allows it to survive inside of us. And research has found that lactobacillus can be killed through antibiotics. But why would we kill this good, good bacteria if it's uh, helping us? Well, that's because it does have some uh, potential side effects as well. So even though L. acidophilus helps with uh, digestion, it can as well reverse the purpose. Uh, one can have very bad gas or an upset stomach or have diarrhea as well. In fact, people with uh, weak immune systems like a person with artificial uh, heart valves probably shouldn't take L. acidophilus for the fear of making them more vulnerable or more weakening their uh, immune systems and have a severe bacterial infection. All right, that's it. Thank you. This presentation is on the human microbiota and Helicobacter pylori.
The human microbiota is all of the microorganisms that interact and live within our bodies. This can include bacteria, fungi, viruses, and other single-celled organisms. Our bodies have trillions of them that help our bodies function properly by maintaining homeostasis, immune system function, digestion, and even mental health. The microorganisms can have different relationships with the body, such as mutualistic, commensalistic, and pathogenic. There are benefits that impact the microbiota, such as absorbing nutrients, breaking down complex carbohydrates, and fighting off bad pathogens. However, there are harmful things that can impact the myo microbiota, such as underlying conditions, hormonal changes, genes, and age, and all of these factors can lead to chronic diseases. There are different microbiomes within the microbiota, such as the skin, mucosa, respiratory tract, GI tract, urogenital tract, and mammary glands. Within the gastrointestinal tract is the stomach, which abiotic factors include highly acidic, low in oxygen, moist, lined with the mucus layer, and performs peristalsis. There are four main phyla, which are bacterioids, firmicutes, proteobacteria, and actinobacteria that make up about 90%, 98% of microbes, and there are over 1,000 species in the stomach. There are positive and negative interactions, which include producing metabolites, which regulate the number of them and also aid in digestion. Some produce neurotransmitters, which can affect mood. Negative ones include diet and the use of antibiotics that can lead to dysbiosis. Helicobacter pylori is a bacteria that can infect the stomach. There are two lineages, such as enterohepatic and gastric helicobacter. H. pylori has very few metabolic pathways, which can make it easy to colonize the stomach and can lead to peptic ulcers, gastritis, gastric adenocarcinoma, and malt lymphoma. Since H. pylori is a microaerophilic, bacteria does not do well in high levels of oxygen, which makes the stomach a perfect place for it to grow. Some symptoms of H. pylori include bloating, nausea, and heartburn. There are two different treatments for H. pylori, such as antibiotics and proton pump inhibitors, which stop acid production within the stomach. However, there is no 100% cure for H. pylori. Lastly, H. pylori affects us by activating the inflammatory cells, impacting the production of cytokines, chemokines, and other inflammatory responses, which can produce toxins that cause infection. While H. pylori is not a disease in itself and can cause many diseases, so it's important to look for underlying causes. Hello everyone, welcome to this video on microbes and meat where we will be discussing about the human microbiome to find us the collection of symbiotic organisms that inhabit the human body. These organisms can include bacteria, archaea, fungi, viruses, and protozoa. They inhabit anatomical sites such as the skin, respiratory system, GI tract, mammary gland, urogenital tract, and mucosa. What can these tiny little things do for us anyway? They can contribute to host nutrient metabolism, protect the gut mucosal barrier, and aid immune response. Take Staphylococcus epidermis, a skin bacterium that has been shown to produce helpful ceramides, which help to maintain the epithelial barrier. But what happens when conditions are unacceptable? Complications can occur. For example, while antibiotics can be helpful, they can also deplete our helpful microbiota and select for antibiotic-resistant strains of pathogenic microbes. So unacceptable. Unacceptable! Okay, let's zoom in on the gut for a second. It has an acidic pH, is anaerobic, moist, and rich in bacteria-derived metabolites. Only bifidobacteriaceae, lactobacillaceae, cryptococcus, firmicutes, and bacteroidaceae can survive there. And they'll interact via a phenomenon called cross-feeding, meaning that the metabolite secreted by one microbe is metabolized by another. But what I really want to talk about today are bifidobacteria, which are related to streptomycetes and mycobacteria due to their high guanosine and cytosine content. These are gram-positive obligate anaerobes, sacrolytic, meaning that they digest sugars, and bifid, meaning Y-shaped. They're able to modulate immune response and use human breast milk sugars as energy and carbon sources for babies. Specifically, they've been shown to change the content of gut microbiota and increase the activity of regulatory T cells, which are a type of immune cell that suppress immune response for maintaining homeostasis and preventing autoimmunity. Man, now I want to replenish my bifidobacteria. Gotta go get some yogurt. Ah, much better. Thank you all for watching this video, and I hope that you learned something new today. Hello, everyone. Today, I'd like to talk about the fascinating world of human microbiota the complex community of microorganisms that live within and on us. Did you know that we have more bacteria in our body than we have red blood cells? The human microbiota, which includes bacteria, 
viruses, fungi, and other microorganisms is critical for maintaining the overall health and well-being of humans. One of the most specialized ecosystems in the human body is the stomach, which relies heavily on its unique microbial community. The microbiota in the stomach helps to promote digestion, synthesize vitamins, and stimulate the immune system. However, an imbalance in the microbiota can lead to adverse health effects. This is where the Lactobacillus plantarium comes in. It can be found in a variety of ecological niches such as vegetables, fermented foods, and in human GI tract. It is a strain of probiotic bacteria mainly found in the mouth and gut. In terms of its specific role within the microbiota, it helps in breaking down the food, absorb nutrients, and control bad microorganisms in the digestive tract that might otherwise cause diseases. Without Lactobacillus plantarum, our digestive system may not function as efficiently as it should and we may experience a range of digestive issues such as bloating, gas, and constipation. The relationship between microorganisms and human is a complex topic that continues to be explored by researchers all around the world. It is truly amazing to consider how we coexist with trillions of microorganisms every day and the importance of maintaining this delicate balance cannot be overstated. Thank you for listening until now. Bye! So, hello everyone. The human microbiome, as we know, consists of trillions of microorganisms and within it are different microbiota such as the bacteria, uh, archaea, fungi, protists, and viruses. Uh, more specific microbiota such as the skin uh, contain mostly of bacteria but also there are some fungi, viruses, and mites found there as well. Um, the main purpose of the skin is to protect microbial systems inside the body from outside invaders. Um, uh, the skin is the largest organ in the body and the, ma there are the major effects that or factors that can cause um, changes to the microbiotas are include pH, pollution, moisture, temperature, oxygen to carbon dioxide ratio, UV radiation, um, interacting with other microbes, genetics, and lifestyle choices such as smoking. Um, so there is a bacteria called Staphylococcus. Caucus, uh, which secretes chemicals that kill invaders and helps reinforce tight junctions between skin cells to prevent invaders from entering the body. Um, and there is a harmful uh, bacteria called Staphylococcus um, aureus, is, which is a bacterial human pathogen, and it's found in normal flora on the skin and mucous membranes. Um, and it only really causes serious infection and disease if it's if entered into the bloodstream and the internal tissues. Um, it is a gram-positive bacteria um, and uh, it's cocci shaped and the arrangement is usually in clusters. Um, it, mean, it usually has like a yellow, a golden yellow color to it um, and can grow anaerobically or aerobically and temperatures between 18 degrees Celsius and 40 degrees Celsius. Hello, fellow microbiology students. Mike Washburn with you today to share homework number one, uh, microorganisms. The human microbiota is an amazing collection of bacteria, archaea, viruses, and fungi. Within these communities are unique and specific combinations of microbes that are tasked with performing different functions. Microbiota are assigned to stimulate the immune system, break down toxic food compounds, as well as synthesize select vitamins and amino acids. Although genetics can have a predetermined impact on our microbiota, we can implement healthy habits to help improve our microbiota and our overall health. There are several well-known benefits that can be obtained through a balanced diet that include different sources of plants, which can provide prebiotics and probiotics. There are things such as our environment and chemicals and certain drugs that have a negative in fact, uh, impact on our microbiota. Lifestyle factors such as air pollution, bad stress, lack of sleep, alcohol abuse, or a sedentary lifestyle can have a negative impact on our microbiota. Another relevant factor is geography. 
According to one source, um, one of my findings showed that there's a lower bacterial diversity and taxa in regards to fiber processing in urban areas. Dysbiosis is known as the imbalance of a bacterial colony, which usually occurs in the GI tract. When dysbiosis occurs, there is a greater chance of chronic disease. These include IBD, IBS, cancer, ob obesity, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. Small intestine is where food starts to get broken down for nutrient absorption. Small intestine includes the duodenum, the jejunum, and ileum, which account for roughly 20 feet of organs. Small intestine contains many folds to improve surface area and include villi and microvilli for maximum absorption and is occupied by several metabolites. There are approximately 100 trillion bacteria that call the small intestine and colon home. I have mentioned down below here several microorganisms that uh, do live in the small intestine. One not mentioned that I'd like to focus on today is lactobacillus. Um, lactobacillus has approximately 44 different strains that exist today. Uh, some of the, um, the previous slides, some of the benefits that I mentioned uh, of lactobacillus in our own system include um, the production of vitamins such as B12, vitamin K, folic acid, and biotin. Lactobacillus family is Lactobacillus I. Genus is Pediococcus, and it is further subdivided into three groups. Um, I've got those three mentioned right there. Lactobacillus is very prevalent within the small intestine, mainly the duodenum. This particular genus is the largest within the lactic acid bacteria family. So let's get into some characteristics. They are gram-positive, non-spore-forming rods, which are known to form chains. They are considered to be chemo-organotrophic, which means they grow in a nutritionally rich environment and require fermentable carbohydrates as their source of fuel. Lactobacillus was first introduced in 1901. Where do they live? Well, they like slightly acidic range conditions uh, from 5.5 to 6.5. Um, so they, have, they live in the digestive system, which was previously mentioned. They also reside in the female genital tract, the oral cavity, and the urinary system. Uh, lactobacillus are considered to be both anaerobic and aerobic, using oxygen as a substrate in certain conditions. Lactobacillus are known to ferment carbohydrates to lactic acid. So let's get into, do we like them or do we not like them? Well, lactobacillus I, um, have many benefits. Lactobacillus are vital to reducing many physiological processes, which involve chronic diseases, these include both rheumatoid arthritis as well as multiple sclerosis. Uh, the same strain of lactobacillus, acidophilus, excuse me, has also been associated with preventing E. coli and other foodborne pathogens. By promoting a healthy population of lactobacillus in the gut, uh, microbi micro the gut microbiome, excuse me, research has shown that obesity and type 2 diabetes may be easier to control. Lastly, cognitive development may increase with a higher level of lactobacillus as part of the gut-brain access. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Spud Mershon. Um, we as people are surrounded by trillions of microorganisms all around us on our skin and all the different microbiomes of our body forming microbiota and they can positively impact us and the systems and functions and metabolism of our body, or they can have a negative impact if the balances um, of the bacterial colonies are thrown off and various microbiomes, uh, or there can even be parasitism. Um, so I'll be focusing on the vaginal microbiome. It is acidic, it is anaerobic, and it is moist and full of this really special vaginal mucosa which is made of non-characterized epithelium covered by vaginal secretion, slime. So a healthy vaginal flora can successfully protect the host from evading pathogens and disease. And it does this largely with the help of the dominant bacteria and the vaginal microbiota, lactobacillus. 
So when the vagina sheds epithelial cells, um, they can become lysed and catabolized by vaginal lumen to smaller polymers. These smaller polymers are anaerobically metabolized by lactobacillus to become either L-lactic acid or D-lactic acid. This is important because it keeps the vagina acidic, which prevents bacterial vaginosis, which is the overgrowth of the candida yeast in the vagina, which is worse than it sounds because this unbalanced microbiota can allow a way for pathogens to come into the vagina, attach the epithelial cells, and we're talking about really serious viruses, HPV, HIV, or any other STI. So it's really important for lactobacillus to be in your vagina and creating that acidity to keep you safe. And it's um, time. <laughs>
The skin microbiota protects the body from microorganisms that can cause diseases, also boost our immunity. An imbalanced skin microbiome can affect the human negatively, such as developing acne or other skin condition. Demodex is a type of mite that lives in the human hair follicles, commonly found in eyelashes, cheeks, side of the nose, outside of the ear canal. Excessive mites can cause a skin condition called demodicosis or demodex folliculitis. They come out at night from the follicles to consume our dead skin cells and hides back to lay eggs. These mites are microbes and me. Now, what is the human microbiota? The human microbiota consists of trillions of microorganisms in and on the human body. They have a variety of different roles, including protection against pathogens, digestion and nutrient absorption, and the building up of the immune system. Many behaviors can impact the microbiota. Some of these behaviors include diet, cosmetic use, and antibiotics, um, and these can lead to infection, pathogen sensitivity, obesity, and auto-inflammatory diseases. Now, the skin is one area of the body that has specific microbiota, um, and there are different regions of the skin. There are dry regions, um, which would be like the forearms or your legs, things like that. Moist regions include like your armpit, um, some of the creases in, on your body, and then oily regions, which would be like your face, or your head, um, things like that. Many microbe interactions on the skin are actually mutualistic, so that means they benefit both the host and the microbe, um, or they have no impact at all. They're benign interactions. Staphylococcus epidermidis is one bacteria that can be found on the skin. It actually lives on everyone. It lives mainly in the armpits, on the head, and the nose of humans, um, and it's very well equipped to survive harsh conditions. One of the things Staphylococcus does well is it prevents colonization of more serious pathogens, but it can also cause increased barrier disruption in specific environments. So in general, it's a very harmless bacteria, but in the right circumstances, it can exacerbate harm caused by other bacteria. The human microbiota is all of the microorganisms that are normally present on or in the human body. So starting at birth, the human is exposed to more and more microorganisms in its environment that eventually adapt to survive in certain areas of the body. Bacteria in the human microbiota participate in digestion, immune system regulation, protection from disease-causing bacteria, production of important vitamins, and more. Um, the human microbiota can influence someone's susceptibility to infectious disease, contribute to chronic illnesses, or even determine how a body responds to pharmaceutical treatments. When microorganisms that belong to one bodily system or anatomical site gain access to a different part of the body, this can lead to those once harmful, harmless or even helpful microorganisms causing disease. Um, increasing incidences of several atopic and autoimmune diseases over the last few decades have led to something called the hygiene hypothesis, which states that practices including the use of refrigeration, pasteurization, water treatment, and food processing implementation on a broad scale can lead to populations of children not being exposed to enough microbes. Several studies suggest a correlation between disrupted microbial composition and diseases like allergies, asthma, atopic eczema, and inflammatory bowel disease. Widespread use of antibiotics may also be contributing to the disruption of microbiota. Several studies have shown that antibiotic treatments can lead to decreases in beneficial bacteria, as well as increases in potential pathogens. Some bacterial shifts that result from antibiotics have been found to persist for up to two years. The mouth is a cozy place for some microorganisms because of its availability of water and nutrients and the neutral pH and its warm temperature. Some microorganisms in the mouth can resist the mechanical removal from chewing and swallowing by adhering to surfaces such as gums and teeth. Others get swallowed or um, shed by epithelial cells. Bacteria um, and protozoa and fungi and viruses and archaea are all found in the normal microbiota of the mouth. There are almost 1,500 total genomes in the oral cavity, including 700 identified species of prokaryotes, um, both gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria. The microbiota in the mouth is very dynamic. It's impacted by the frequency at which food is consumed, changes in the pH, interactions among bacteria, and in the long term, uh, gene mutations and horizontal gene transfer between bacteria. Many microorganisms in the mouth have symbiotic relationships with their host. 
Much of the oral microbiota exists in the form of a biofilm that helps maintain oral, oral homeostasis, protect the oral cavity, uh, and prevent disease development. Imbalances within the oral microbiome can lead to tooth decay and cavities. When the bacteria are able to colonize on the surface of the tooth, they may produce acids that can demineralize the tooth's enamel or cementum covering the root and the underlying dentin. With enough deterioration, bacteria gain access to the pulp chamber, and if the pulpal tissue becomes infected, this infection can destroy the pulpal tissue and extend out to the roots of the tooth and into the surrounding periodontal tissues. Streptococcus colonizes the oral cavity within hours. Hours of a human's birth. Later, as teeth grow in age, Streptococcus parasanguis and Streptococcus mutans colonize the enamel surfaces of the teeth, and Streptococcus salivarius makes itself at home in the surfaces of the cheeks and the gums and colonizes the saliva. Um, this is aided by Streptococcus's ability to readily produce glycocalyx and other adherence factors. Streptococci are based on their hemolytic, serologic, physiological, um, and genetic similarities. Streptococci are divided into six phylogenetic groups, anginosis, bovis, mitis, mutants, pyogenic, and salivarius. Many streptococci are membranes of the normal, um, or sorry, are members of the normal human microbiota. Um, however, some are highly pathogenic. For example, streptococcus pyogens can cause the infamous strep throat, and streptococcus mutans is known to cause cavities and tooth decay. Bacteria in the streptococcus genus are spherical or oval-shaped and are often arranged in pairs or chains. Um, their cells are gram-positive. Streptococci can grow anaerobically or aerobically, but cannot use oxygen for metabolic reactions. Instead, they use glucose and some other carbohydrates as sources of energy. The human microbiome is an intricate collection of microbes residing at various sites in the human body. The human microbiota is overwhelmingly beneficial and possesses tremendous benefit to the host, contributing to the metabolic function, protection against microorganisms and parasites like pathogens, and providing nutrients and energy by extracting and generating vitamins and amino acids. Microbial communities can exist in symbiotic or commensal relationships with the host with which they compete for the location and nutrients in their environment. Maintaining a symbiotic relationship in which both the microorganism and host can mutually benefit from their interactions and maintain optimal condition in which bacterial DNA can be synthesized, lifestyle and environmental factors determine one's microbial diversity and correlates with an individual's health status, genotype, diet, and hygiene. The microorganisms that currently conform the mammalian microbiota have gone through selective pressure and they survive due to the advantageous role they play in the host homeostasis. The oral cavity is home to microbial communities that play an important role in the pathogenesis and development of various oral and systemic diseases, as well as commensal organisms that contribute to the host's health. Lactobaculus is a probiotic existing in the oral cavity, and it prevents the colonization of oral pathogens, and it produces hydrogen peroxide and lactic acid. However, when homeostasis, homeostasis is disrupted, it can cause diseases. Streptococcus mutans bacterium is a pathogen that is associated with development of biofilms and dental caries. Among the environmental factors that sustain the microbiota, microorganisms in the oral cavity prefer to maintain high cell densities coupled with the limit, limited food supply like glucose to overlay pathogens and their ability to cause disease. For example, S. mutans is associated with the prevalence of cavities and plaque due to the high sugar content surrounding teeth, which is then consumed by the bacterium, eating away and demineralizing the tooth's enamel. The factors that keep one's mouth healthy against oral pathogens are proper oral hygiene, diet, and abstaining from drug usage. Streptomena denticoli is a gram-negative anaerobic spirochete commonly found in the mouth and associated with periodontal disease. T. denticoli aid other pathogens to colonize and form dental plaque, so it is an essential late colonizer. T. denticoli is a highly resistant pathogen and it utilizes free glycine as a ma major energy and carb carbon source. Further, it senses and responses to nutrients like glucose through a process of locomotion called chemotaxis, which causes this bacteria to eat away at the sugar surrounding the teeth, demineralizing the enamel. As well as, it can destroy communication pathways and other structural host cell proteins by releasing small spherical vessels filled with various molecules, such as enzymes and toxins, triggering dentalism, which is a key violence factor in periodontal diseases. Dentalism can also break down cytokines, which are used by the body to alert and activate the immune system, and it triggers the inflammation of the gums. Chronic inflammation of tissue and gum linings, infection under the gum tissue, and infections reaching the root of the tooth can be treated medically by scaling plaque off teeth, taking antibiotics, and for severe injuries, 
The gums are surgically cleaned and a tissue graft may be performed. T. denticola is a pivotal pathogen and facilitates colonization, survival growth, and pathobiology among its associations with other oral pathogens. Hi there, my name is Grace Brown. This is my presentation for Microbio. The human biome contains between 10 and 100 trillion symbiotic cells. This means it's a complex system. It's there to help protect us and support our immune system. The skin biome or cutaneous biome is the first defense from the outside world. Infectious bacteria can get into our bodies from many points and the immune system does its best to fight off these foreign bodies. A study done by Ashton University in 2019 found that beauty blenders, application tools, and cosmetic products were the perfect breeding ground for this kind of bacteria. It found that staphylococci was among the most common bacteria found in cosmetics products. These kinds of microorganisms thrive and grow in warm, damp, and dark environments. Staphylococcus bacteria is opportunistic and can grow rapidly given the right environment. In 2001, Booth conducted a study and found that Staphylococcus was among the leading cause of infection and secondary hospitalizations. Staphylococcus aureus can cause swelling, pain, redness, and an accumulation of pus. It can also cause bloodstream, bone, and joint infections. It has become resistant to many kinds of penicillin and needs to be treated with other strains of antibiotics. River State University conducted a study this year that sampled 80 products from Subjects Daily Cosmetics. They found that 55% of them had Staphylococcus epidermis growing on them, 22.5 had Staphylococcus aureus, and the other 22.5 had Candida alcabans. 100% of the samples taken had potentially harmful bacteria growth on them. Antibiotics were tested on the bacteria, and it was susceptible, meaning that it worked. The cosmetic industry is a multi-billion dollar industry that is constantly growing. There are many social aspects involved, such as sharing makeup, personal care items, and even using testers at stores. Sharing products increases risk for bacterial spreading. Protecting your body, you have to give yourself a fighting chance. Ways to do this would be not sharing products, paying attention to the shelf life and expiration dates, properly storing cosmetics, and disinfecting clean tools. This will help ensure that bacteria spread is at a minimum, helping protect our cutaneous biome as well as our immune system. Thank you. The human microbiota is made up of more than 100 trillion microbes that have evolved to live on and within human beings. They benefit our body system by breaking down nutrients, synthesizing amino acids, vitamins such as vitamin B and K, also provide protection from pathogenic organisms that enter our body. Dysbiosis can cause by changing in diet, stress, underlying disease, or using antibiotic. The largest concentration of the human microbiome is found in the gut. The gut microbes are the key to many aspects of human health, including immunity function, metabolism, and neurobehavior outcomes. Some of the most common bacteria is Bifidobacterium, Lactobacillus, Clostridium, Streptococcus, and Ruminococcus. Dysbiosis in the gut microbiota can cause obesity, heart disease, or inflammatory bowel disease. Metabolism is one of the routes by which the gut microbiota communicate together and with the host. They build and recognize microbiota patterns. Also, they adapt with the new one to increase the fitness of another. Together, they work to maintain a stable digestive system. Lactobacillus are one of the most important bacteria that can found in the human gut. They are classified as genus Bacillus, gram-positive, non-forming rod shape that can grow without oxygen. Lactobacillus create an acidic environment to help prevent harmful bacteria from colonizing the gut. They also produce T cells and increase anti-inflammatory cytokine release to regulate the immune system. For this reason, lactobacillus are very beneficial for the host and especially for the gut microbiota.
The human microbiota is made of a vastly large collection of microorganisms that are everywhere inside of you, on, outside of you all the time. They're necessary for health, but balance is key. There's some benefits to these bacteria, like helping with digestion and decreasing inflammation, but they can also cause harm. Um, they generally try to compete with the harmful opportunistic bacteria to avoid infections. Their infections are more likely if you're immunosuppressant or live a less healthy lifestyle. Um, sometimes antibiotics are necessary. They work by inhibiting protein synthesis, cell wall synthesis, DNA replication, basically uh, killing bacteria and keeping them from reproducing. There's different classes. And unfortunately, we are seeing more and more bacteria that are antibiotic resistant due to the overuse of antibiotics. The female reproductive system changes um, in its environment due to hormonal changes and more. The most common microorganism found there is the lactobacilli, but again, balance is key. Too many means you might uh, get bacterial vaginosis. Slightly acidic, warm, moist, rich in nutrients. Um, and the thing that changes mostly is the mucosa. It changes in viscosity. But in general, it's there to hydrate body cavity, forming a partial barrier for harmful bacteria and making a better environment for any spermatozoa that might enter. The lactobacilli are always present no matter at what stage during the cycle. And the function in general is to outcompete opportunistic pathogens. They're gram-positive, member of lactic acid family. Majority of species do fermentation, but not everyone. And the environment that they colonize is exactly the environment that the female reproductive system can provide, which is why they're so prolific there. They're pretty similar to the pediococci, and together they form a family. Uh, and they do, in fact, prefer anaerobic and acidic environments, um, which is why they're perfect for the female reproductive system. The human microbiota. The human microbiota consists of microorganisms that live inside and outside of the body. The condition of the microbiota is influenced by the health of the host and medications such as antibiotics, but other things like disease, illnesses, and weight can all impact the amount of microorganisms that are present too. Antibiotics, which come from bacteria, can cause the spread of Clostridium difficile. Clostridium difficile is able to spread through antibiotics because they disrupt the ability of the intestinal mucosa to defend the body from toxins. This is how a person can become sick when using antibiotics. Imbalances in microorganisms can lead to unwanted symptoms within the human body. A good example of this can be seen with Ereshkigia coli. When E. coli is introduced into the gut microbiota, uh, specifically E. coli that comes from other organisms, usually meat, we become sick. That imbalance can cause unwanted symptoms. Microorganisms are capable of being both beneficial and harmful. They're able to aid in digestion, provide structured organs, defend from pathogens, and carry about metabolic processes and more. Moving on to the intestinal microbiota. The intestinal tract is an ideal space for microbes. There are numerous metabolites. It's a moist environment. There's a high concentration of enzymes, and it has a fluctuating pH depending on the location. As you can see here, there are tons and tons of different microbes that are present within this tract. Um, just to name a few, there's acnobacteria, bacteria or debts, cyanobacteria, from acutes, fusobacteria, so on, so on. You can see even more that fall underneath these classes themselves. The list just goes on and on. Um, the interactions that the orga these organisms have with us and each other can have both positive and negative effects. Um, some help us with digestion, such as bacterioids or lactobacillus, which we are going to be talking about later or others can mean harm to us or each other. Microorganisms tend to be really competitive for space and nutrients within the intestines, and a lot of their interactions tend to be more on the negative side than the positive side. The intestinal microbiota can be impacted by diseases and conditions as well, specifically IBS or obesity. Obesity changes the amount of bacter bacterioids and acnobacteria that are present. The imbalance changes the amount of carbohydrate binding molecules that there are, which impacts the amount of energy that the host can receive. Um, moving on to lactobacillus. Lactobacillus is under the bacilli class. Other bacilli in this class include bacillus, listeria, listeria streptococcus, and staphylococcus. Lactobacilli are gram-positive, rod-shaped, and they're facultative anaerobes. Their med uh, metabolism focuses 
on breaking down carbohydrates to make them into lactic acid. And their main role is aiding in the digestion of dairy products as the stomach can't always digest everything on its own. Hi everyone, today I will be going over microbes and me. So looking at the human microbiota, our bodies are hosts to more than 3 trillion microorganisms and communities such as archaea, bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites. Um, so these microbes live in different areas on the inside or outside of our bodies. They help regulate digestion, immune support, produce vitamins such as vitamin B, vitamin B12, and vitamin K, which is needed for blood coagulation. A few things that can impact our microbiota um, is the overuse of antibiotics because they kill both the good and the bad microorganisms along with our diet. So uh, any imbalances to our microbiota can cause weight gain, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and other health issues. So moving on to the skin microbiota, our skin is the largest organ of our body. Um, the skin microbiota helps prevent invasions of pathogens and defends our body from harmful bacteria. Uh, skin cells send signals to our immune cells to trigger immune response. These signals from our skin microbiome can activate or deactivate the immune systems. This helps heal wounds and control inflammation. Any imbalances can lead to acne, eczema, psoriasis, and infection. So looking at the microorganism Staphylococcus aureus, um, this organism is gram-positive, cocci shaped It can grow aerobically or anaerobically. Um, it is found on our skin and mucous membranes. It is the most common bacterial infection, um, such as cellulitis, impetigo, and also MRSA. Um, it is transmitted person to person by direct contact. There are trillions of microbes that are found in and on the human body that make up the human microbiota. The microbes included in this large community are bacteria, viruses, archaea, and eukaryotes. Within the microbiota, it is necessary to achieve homeostasis to maintain a symbiotic relationship between the human host and the many microorganisms. When there is an imbalance in the microbiome, it leaves the system susceptible to invasion from other microbes from the environment and to the dysbiosis can lead to an overgrowth in an existing colony which can cause illness. Development of microbiota begins in utero, is shaped by the birthing parent and continues to develop from our environment. The respiratory tract hosts an ecosystem of microbial organisms that have commensal, symbiotic, as well as potentially pathogenic relationships with the human host. The respiratory microbiome has a large part in forming immunity, as well as taking part in forming the structure of the respiratory tract. The upper respiratory tract has more communities of microbes in it and protects the lower respiratory tract from infection. The microbes living in the nasopharynx region of the human body must be those who can benefit from or tolerate oxygen. The nasal cavity ranges per individual but tends to live within a fairly neutral pH range of 6.1 to 7.92. The mucosa of the nares and the nasopharynx provide a moist environment rich with plenty of fluid. Staphylococcus epidermidis is a bacterium that resides in the nasal cavities. It is an aerobic, gram-positive coccus bacterium usually located on the skin and on the mucosal surfaces. In microscopic images, colonies look pearly white, glistening, opaque, and spherical. It tends to live commensally in the anterior nares and can also have a beneficial relationship with the human host. Ep S. epidermidis has the ability to live beneficially, commensally, or become pathogenic, illustrating the dynamic nature of the human microbiota.